How's everyone today? Hopefully you're doing great. I, I am too, a little tired this morning. This morning, I'm sure that you can see in the background that um, uh, the scenery is a little different today. We are doing, as my grandson says, a sleepover with them tonight. Um, their parents are getting ready to move and that's why the empty room behind me, I'm at their house and they are doing some some things where they're where they're headed and needed a, a break with that so we have um, spent the night and getting everything together here for them um, with the kids and stuff so it's been really fun it's been really fun a little less sleep than we usually get but hey you know that's part of that's part of it so um little different view uh, behind me. Today we're going to be talking about blocks and the type of blocks that you may want to add to your quilt as you begin the design process. I think it was lesson maybe three, uh, two or three, where I talked about starting to think about, you know, what the end result was going to be for you in terms of the actual quilt that you're going to make and i drew out a plan at that time and i knew that i wanted to use the theme fabric in some way those bouquets of flowers in there in my end result and so i kind of started with that idea started playing with it got a design that i thought that i was going to be fairly happy with and then when I finished the blocks last week and was looking to see if I needed to make any more to fill it out and finish it off and the design that I had done wasn't quite working for me and that often happens I'll get an idea in my mind I'll look at the fabrics I'll think about that and then the process will begin that I'll draw it out and I'll kind of work from that for most of my block designs etc but because this one was a little bit different doing color theory and doing the blocks specifically for a particular color changed that up just a little bit but that didn't wasn't really what affected the design that i had it was that it became too much and not enough in the right places so i want to take you back and share with you a little bit of what those what that design looked like and what i was thinking um, and as we do that, then we'll walk through how I go about designing a quilt. And, and I know that I do not do that the same way others do. Uh, they'll design from the very beginning, especially if they're choosing a particular block that they're working with on their quilt design. And I find that to be um, far quicker and a lot easier than starting, you know, with blocks because in a sense, I started a little bit backwards on this one because I knew that I wanted to teach color theory and I wanted to do it by the blocks and the end result was going to be a little bit of a mystery. So um, the the first thing that I, that I think one needs to ask regardless of what type of quilt that you're going to make is, do you have an end size in mind? Are you making a lap quilt, a baby quilt, a uh, full size, twin size, uh, king size quilt? You, you need to know in terms of the big picture, what size do you want to end up with? And I was looking at possibly a wall hanging or a small lap size um, to finish this particular quilt off. So that's that was where my thinking came into, into play. And then the second thing that I need you to ask yourself in terms of a sampler is, are all your blocks going to be the same size or are you going to mix that up a little bit? And that, you know, the variety of sizes. And I had chosen to begin with a variety of sizes. So let me um, share with you a little bit of that and the change of thinking. And then I wanna go back and talk to you a little bit about um, filler blocks. So let's take a look. 
here was my initial thought and thinking of how I wanted to to do this quilt and you know a couple of things um, worked really well the blocks up against the the theme fabric which is right here were, were wonderful um, I was very pleased with that but a couple of the things that I was you know planning on doing here to add some size and depth to the quilt just did not work um, no matter what I what I had done in here so I began with okay I have to eliminate this which brought the size of my quilt down about another six inches and then all of these smaller boxes were going to be those shoe fly fillers that I had and they looked great um, up against the the florals and I was very pleased with that but as I put everything up on the design wall it began to look a little jumbled um, that it wasn't quite together all the way and I knew that I needed to do something and so then I basically discarded this and then began to simply use my design wall and began the process of playing with both of my you know nine inch blocks of the florals as well as the blocks that I had made for the quilt along with you except for the two that I had made larger which was the tree and the one star block and those I had made 12 inches because I wanted them to fit in and they had a lot of pieces and just felt that that would be a little bit easier but the one thing that I know that I'm going to do right now and I'm in the process of doing that is I'm I'm remaking these two blocks and I'm going to make them both nine inches with the new design that playing on the design wall has brought me to so um, with that in mind um, let's go back and talk a little bit about um, when we have say uh, a particular block in mind that we want to use on our quilt and we want to add a complementary block to it and why would that be a good idea sometimes it helps with the design of how the end result is going to work and so I will get my graph paper and this for me is a way to work at design without using math I simply count the squares and so it, here I had the blocks already mostly cut out so I could use my design wall and put it up but I tried to work a little bit with a you know a complementary uh, block in there so that I could get a secondary design and I want to come back down to the paper and if you have some graph paper or if you have the paper that um, that you worked on your design with let's take a look at it along um, with me and we'll look at that together so let's let's come back down so I have my graph paper and I want to begin the process of designing. So each square is going to equal one inch. And I tend to work that way quite a bit um, so that I can get a full quilt on graph paper. This happened to be in the back of a notebook and it's not the best graph paper to use, but it works. Um, and uh, but I do have a pad where I do most of my quilt designing on in terms of that and you can also download from um, you know the internet uh, graph paper and so however you want to use that so if I were to take my blocks that I made and I would count you know nine over and nine down And there I have my first block and you know this one could have been really any one of the blocks that I had but now I want to put a complementary block with this 
and um, and I can't do two things at once. Like I I have a tough time walking and chewing gum at the same time. So now if I make this as my complementary block to whatever this block is in in my in my quilt. I want something that's going to give me another design or be the design for the quilt. Now the easiest one that I know of is, is the, um, nine patch and the nine patch works really well in terms of giving you kind of that Irish chain look because if these were the the dark blocks and you started um, creating and I'd get out my color pencils and do that but if I were going to now create another you know block And I'm and I'm going to continue with that nine patch, and I could make small nine patches within a large nine patch, um, half square triangles, whatever. But if you look at this, um, you're going to begin to see that you're going to have a line running through this, and it's going to it's going to affect the outcome of your quilt. So these blocks along here could be pretty much whatever block design if you chose one or if you chose many. And in this case we chose quite a few and our complementary block would set those blocks off and give you a design to the quilt and these certainly don't have to be you know nine patches with an Irish chain they just work well they're easy and they always look stunning as a complementary block but anything that you know comes together in in a point um, along here works really well and especially if you have another block that say this block had a half square you know triangle here and a half square triangle here if you were working with something like that that adds another element to that that crossing of of design and if you have some blocks in mind go ahead and put them in to you know the chat box so that we can kind of all see if you work at and design your own quilts what you might use as a complementary block or if you want it to be entirely um, the blocks that you've made in your sampler quilt then you know there there are many things that that you can possibly do in in between those um, number one if you went if we go back to um, the uh, style that I worked with originally you could add filler blocks and I you know I had written in some star blocks I have you know the, the small blocks that I had put up here as those shoe fly blocks um, flying geese work really well so do pinwheels uh, checkerboard piano keys or a plain swatch of fabric in between them all work really well to add to sampler blocks that you can put together and especially if they're different sizes because you would start with your largest size and put that you know out um, in terms of designing the quilt and how you want to balance your largest one and then put your next largest blocks and then your smaller blocks and wherever those opening uh, those openings are that's left in you know the the quilt block design is then where those what I call filler blocks um, fit into and then you make choices of do you want them to be flying geese do you want them to be nine patches pinwheels whatever it is that will complement and work with the quilt design that you have so I am what I'm working on and decided to use 
is I'm going to use my floral print and I'm going to work with my blocks that I made. And my space is, is somewhat limited um, here. So we'll get, a, we'll get an idea of what that is. And so when I put my blocks, out you know those first three and start to play with them this is what ended up figuring out and for me looking the best um, that I could do I put my blocks on each side I put this in the middle then the next row let me push that up out of the way then my next row would be um, you know the floral in the center and my blocks on either side and so now I have um, something that um, more or less looks like that and what happens here and I know that let me get see if I can get the camera up a little bit higher um, and if that gives us a little bit more space to look at this um, and uh, Linda has asked, will this work? Filler blocks with all the different styles and colors we have done these weeks. The answer is yes, it would work. And I played with quite a, quite a few different designs and they, they did come out. Um, I found a, a couple of ways that they did look pretty, pretty good together. But I ended up, um, I'm going to go with this design simply because I enjoyed it the, the, the most. And I really worked hard um, at making this theme fabric my highlight because that's really what I wanted to do. So now what's happening instead of using, you know, a complementary block or putting these side by side together, I am using these floral arrangements as my connecting block. And so the quilt kind of comes out looking very much like a floral quilt, which was my hope and desire. Um, then let's see, Kyla, I'm going with a modern look. I have designed a very linear design, rows and borders, and I'm thinking of matchstick quilting. I think that's a that's a beautiful idea, and it, it's absolutely will work really well. So now what I'm going to do is something similar to what um, Kyla is talking about. I looked at a lot of fabrics that I had in my stash. And I came up with this one as the one I felt um, complemented it the best. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sashing in between my blocks. It sets them off um, fairly well. And so in between, I'm using this lavender um, kind of... Uh, so it gives my quilt a very peaceful um, look to it. So I'm going to be sashing around all of my, you know, all of my blocks um, in my quilt. I'm excited about that. And I'm going to show you here in a second a design that will, will show you. So each block will be surrounded by the lavender, uh, you know, these blocks as well as the floral blocks. So when I got that done, that whole matchstick idea um, kind of fell in, into place for me just a little bit. And so I um, started playing on my design wall and working with my blocks. And I decided that I too wanted a modern look to this because the fabrics were so vivid and bright and used a lot of modern fabrics. So I designed um, my six blocks that we did and the um, six floral arrangements from the fabric into this pattern. And this is the block that I felt looked the best in the center. It had some, you know, some aliveness, so I'm going to put that one there. And then the other blocks will complement. And where I've drawn this funny little circle will be all of my floral prints that I cut out. 
and with the sashing and then I felt that it needed something else. So I will be adding that lavender fabric along the side over here. Um, I think I'm going to use either 9 or 12 inch strip along this side and then I'm going to use all of the fabrics that I used in my blocks and I'm going to use these matchsticks. What I haven't decided is whether I'm going to have them six inches long or if I'm going to go and create them nine or twelve inches depending on what they look like and I'm going to do that both at the top and at the bottom of my quilt and then this side will be wider so this is going to be offset and it increases my quilt um, to a, uh, a good lap size quilt and it gives it a little bit of a modern twist and it's a lot of fun and it looked really well when I was working with it on the um, design wall and this is where I cannot say enough how much a design wall really helps in terms of being able to play and get a real feel for how that quilt is going to look. And so this is not the way to design a quilt or, or anything. It's the way that works for me and I want to share it with you. But I also know that some of you have a lot of different ideas and ways that you go about putting your quilt together and designing it. And some of you prob probably use one of the new, um, you know, the EQ programs or another computer program. And that can make it really easy to do. I don't have, you know, the EQ um, program. And I understand that um, Quilter Select and Alex Anderson just came out with a new one that is supposed to be... Um, very easy to work with um, and an excellent tool. So I can't wait to um, kind of see and assess that because it may push me over the edge to purchase um, a computer design program because um, that could certainly help. But I do have a lot of fun of putting my work up on the design wall and really working with it until I find something that, that strikes a chord with me. And I'll play on graph paper and I'll do a lot of drawing. My colored pencils and I um, and a good movie on TV works really well um, too. And with the graph paper, and if I know my block sizes, I don't have to do any math because I can draw it out using each of the squares as an inch. And all I have to be able to do is count and draw lines. And that works really well for me because math and I have not always got along real well. I do okay, but um, I prefer not to not to use it. I've, I've told some of my classes when they ask me really tough math questions that uh, math gives me a rash. And, um, you know, I, it's just, it's not my forte. So this is how I approach it. I count the squares on the graph paper. I play on my design wall. And if you don't have a design wall, there are some great ones out on the market that are portable. I, for years, I bought a uh, flannel backed tablecloth and hung it. Um, I put two screws in the, um, over a closet on each end. If you looked at behind me, those uh, slatted doors back there, I would put that there and I would put a grommet on each side of the um, tablecloth and hang that over my um, closet doors. And I would use that as a design wall. And when I was done, I would take it down and roll it up and my design stayed put. I didn't have to worry about that and when I needed to come back and work on it, I simply hung it back up. And um, so for, for a long time when I didn't have the wall space or wasn't able to use a design wall, I created one with a flannel backed uh, tablecloth that cost me at that time about $5 um, and I think they're up to $12 now at um, some of the, the, the department stores. and. Um, 
So that's another way to tackle that idea. So this is this is kind of where we are at this point in the color theory. There's going to be some wrap up time. Um, I'm going to work through how to measure for sashing for borders. We're going to work on that next week. And then I want to go um, and, you know, finish off with all of the different things that we have learned and a few of the things that I would like to still share with you in terms of looking at color and choosing your fabrics for the quilt in the first place. And I know that we did some of that at the beginning. I want to wrap it up with that as well. So for me, the next couple of, of sessions that we're going to do are very important. Uh, they, they can make or break a quilt in terms of how it hangs, how it looks, and how well your um, you know, long arm quilter can work with your quilt, etc. So I, I do really want to um, look uh, you know, at some of those things in terms of uh, both color uh, color theory, and I, I know we're calling it this, and, and it's because I lack an, another language um, to use for it, but also how important that value um, is in the overall quilt, because as you start putting your blocks together, and you're using those warm color blocks and those cool color blocks, and you are using darks and lights and you're trying to put them up so that they work well within the quilt, even if it's a sampler, that it's well balanced. And I do want to speak towards being balanced and show you some, you know, some differences that can happen when you aren't looking at both weight balance as well as color balance and value balance. So those are um, some important issues that we're going to still address. If you have questions, please, you know, put them up. Ask. I, I know we, we can't talk back and forth on this, but you can certainly ask your questions on the forum or here in the chat box in the coming weeks to wrap this up. And I do, uh, I would love to see some of your end results um, of how you put this quilt together. And I think it would be really helpful to each other if we had that as well. Let me do um, a real quick assessment um, um, I see that uh, someone from Quilters uh, Select put up quilt design software from Quilters Select. Um, there's a link there, so I would check it out. I've been trying to find the information on it and checking it out. Um, and, um, and there's a link for the forum. Uh, Linda says that she has lots of difficulty choosing border colors, hues, tones. Will you help with the color wheel? Yes, um, that's next week. I really plan to work um, quite a bit with you in terms of how to go about choosing that sashing. I'm going to work on my design wall, take a number of pictures for you so that I can throw them up. And um, so we'll work, yes, we'll work on that. Um, and the finished quilts, you're right. I can't wait to, to see what some of you have, have decided to do. Um, and it's going to be really, really cool to see what some of you have done. If you have, especially if you haven't used, um, the fabrics that were in the kit, if yours isn't, is more, a little bit more traditional, it's going to be really, I think, exciting to see how you come up because sometimes the feel of the fabric also would determine the, the final design. And that's really what it came down to for me as I was playing on my design wall. I'm looking at it saying, this is very modern looking to me. And so when I started throwing, you know, those blocks up in the different sizes and stuff, I found a couple of designs that I was that I was happy with. And then it struck me that somewhere in my memory bank, um, I had seen something similar to this with the the strips of fabric at the top and bottom. And um, 
a little bit offset. So then I started playing in that, and then I kind of fell in love. So um, I hope to have it pretty much together for you um, for next time, or at least up on the design wall with all the parts and pieces in place uh, so that we can play and that we can talk about choosing border fabrics, that we can talk about choosing the kind of sashing that you want in between, and the hues and the value of those and what they should or should not be. So I'm excited about that part of it, excited to see your work. So if you can, uh, throw them up, throw a picture up, or send them to me, and I will put them on the screen next week. Uh, so that, that others can see the, the great work that you've been doing. And so uh, with that, I will say goodbye, and that I hope that you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.